In this video, I'll teach you how to make a powerful engine using a simple car alternator that you can use for karting, bicycles, or any other project. First, find a suitable alternator. I chose this one because it was very affordable for me. And when you have it, you have to first remove the back cover, removing all the screws you see, then prying a little if that's your case or not. You start removing all the back cover, which is almost always plastic, or it can have a metal cover or whatever, but you have to remove it. Once you have removed the cover, you have to look for any screw you see on the top of the alternator, and you will have to remove them one by one. It usually brings about three or four screws. They are more or less all the same, but you have to remove all the screws you see. Then you will see a series of wires connected to the alternator plate. It has like a little cover. These are the diodes. You have to cut them all. Any wire you see, you have to cut it. Don't worry, you won't damage anything that could harm your alternator. It's simply about cutting everything so that any extra cover that the alternator has comes out. Any connector, anything that is connected, you have to leave it completely bare, cutting everything. Whatever you see that cannot be unscrewed until the cover comes off, then you will have the wires exposed. These are the alternator's thickest cables. Instead of cutting them, you need to sever their connection to the alternator. As shown in the video, leave the cables exposed without cutting them. Ensure that only the three or six main cables of the alternator coil are loose when cutting the connections to the remaining cover. The piece you removed is not sheet metal. It's the alternator brush connector, which may have a voltage regulator. Cut them. So that only the central part remains, which is the part that connects the brushes. You should only have the brush connector with the alternator shaft left. Once you have it, hold it however you want. I used a cable tie for ease, but as long as it stays still, it's fine. You may need to make a small hole on top to put it back, but with some skill and time, you'll manage it. You may find that your alternator has three or six wires. If it has three, you don't have to do anything. But if it has six like this one, then you will have to wire it this way. First, you will get a multimeter and measure the continuity of each wire. You will see that a wire that enters on one side will be the same one that comes out on the other side. So you have to identify this and put some letters to identify which is which. The order can be completely random, so don't guide yourself by the images I'm showing you. In the end, you would have the three wires A, B, and C, one and A, B, and C, two, where one would be the input and the other the output, respectively. We are going to connect them in delta as seen in the graphic, but if you don't know how to do it, simply join as seen in the photo respecting letters and numbers. Next is the other key part in our engine, the controller. The controller is a common bicycle controller. I'm going to use this 350 watt one because it's the one I have now but I recommend you use a 1500 watt one, which you can also get at a very good price in China, and they work much better. You also need an electric bicycle throttle of about $3 bought on the same page. The next thing is to connect a 12 volt battery to the brushes we had previously connected. Don't be scared if it throws a couple of sparks or something like that, because consuming a lot of current, it's normal for that to happen, but nothing will happen to you. I'm powering it with 12V and about 4A. It may consume between two and four more than that. It would no longer be something normal. And as you see, once when you do it, you will notice resistance from the central axis of the alternator. Connect the three largest cables from your controller to the three corresponding cables in your alternator. They are easy to identify due to their distinctive characteristics. Order doesn't matter, it's in any order. And once you've connected them all, if you want the motor to turn the other way, you simply change the order of two of the cables. And that's it. For a detailed tutorial on connecting the controller, especially the accelerator, to a small screen, switch, or any other device, you can watch this YouTube video. Connect your battery. I'm using a lithium one, but you can use a car battery or any other with the correct voltage. This one is 36V, but there's a 1500W one that's 48V, so connect a 48V battery. You always have to give the 12V we talked about before to the central coil because if not, this will happen that the engine simply will not run 
or it will run very weak, very lazy. It will not serve you directly at all. And um, it's ready to put wherever you want. In this case, I removed the pulley. I had to cut it because I didn't have the tool to remove it. But cutting it also comes out very easy. And then you can weld a pinion. You can grab anything or just use the same pulley that the alternator brought. I welded a pinion because it was much easier for what I wanted to use it for, which was for a mini carding. But you can do anything with this alternator. It's a powerful alternator to build an electric carding, a mini carding, an electric bicycle or anything you can think of. And you just have to mount it and try it. I'd leave you some videos of where I mounted it, which was my mini cart, so you can see how it works. And more or less, the performance of our alternator Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to comment what you thought of this video. If you want more videos of this type, then subscribe to my channel and my primary channel of The Hack Life. A hug, bye.